He's joined us on Mondays for years, but today's not Monday. It's not. It's Friday. And so you're confused by this, aren't you? Are you confused by this? <laughs> no. Monday is July 4th, right? So we wanted to make sure that he could be with us or with his family on the holiday. So with us today. But he still wanted to answer your questions, which brings us to this moment. Yeah, got that cleared up. That was a great explanation. <laughs> Peter Fink from Certified Transmission. Peter, Peter how are you doing? I might be confused, you know. I think i got to work all this Friday. week now. You no, know? you're <laughs> off on Monday. Oh, Please okay. don't come I here. Listen, right. we just didn't want to have you, have to have you work you on go. the 4th of July. Enjoy all the right. holiday. So, enjoy. Good deal. Okay. Uh, let's get to this first question. This first question, it comes from Mindy, and she writes, My 2010 Civic has recently been making a humming sound when I accelerate the brake also appears to be squeaking a bit. Could these two things be related? Does the squeak mean I need new brakes? Means the radio ain't loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy way to solve it that. Up. Uh, you know, us deaf guys can't hear those noises, okay? No, so, that's selective you know? hearing when your wife's trying to bend your ear about something. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Um, truthfully, it sounds like we got two different things going here. I don't think the brakes and the acceleration of the humming, okay, mm -hmm. is going to be. Chances are we've got a bearing on the front of the motor or like an alternator bearing or the uh, serpentine belt. Uh, there's a bearing for the automatic tensioner, mm -hmm. uh, common to go bad, okay, at around 7,500,000 miles, okay. Mm -hmm. So for a uh, 2010, car. surely could be in that category, mm -hmm. okay, and stuff. Um, so I think that's probably where that noise is. The squeaking of the brakes, again, do I need brakes? I don't, that's a hard question to answer because I don't know when was the last time mm -hmm. brakes were done on this car. It's surely a possibility because they do have squeakers on them that give you an early signal that uh, you're getting close that the brake pads are wore out. So it's surely a possibility. If the brakes have been done on this, uh, there's so many different kind of brake materials people can mm -hmm. use from cheap stuff to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. If you use the cheap stuff, mm -hmm. the brakes will make noise, okay? And guess what? You get to do it again, That's okay? Right. That right. stuff. And you get to spend more money because you got to buy the right That's stuff. That's why. Okay. You don't want to go cheap on the brakes. You know, any parts anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that, oh my gosh, if uh, somebody charged me $100 for a part and I can find it somewhere else for 50 they think they're getting ripped off. Usually it's not the it case. There's the a quality. quality of the part, okay, and stuff. And I call them lower cost parts. This goes sound bad, but kind of used car specials, okay, just to make the car go down the road and get right. rid of it, okay, mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's not really for the long life, okay. So I think we got two different problems. Mm -hmm. You need to get it in and check it out. If you haven't had brakes done for a long time, it probably means you're gonna the brakes are probably down, getting close to needing it. If they have been. I would have to say somebody's either used some cheap parts or didn't do it quite right, okay, mm -hmm. and stuff, because that's not normal, again, so both do need attention. Yeah. Okay, All right, so. Mindy, there you go. Rob is up next. He says, I can't unlock my 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee with my key fob. I've changed the battery in both my fobs and unhooked my Jeep battery to reset the inner settings. Neither one worked. What is my next step? Well, the next step is if you want it to work, you're probably lost uh, the module that talks to the key fobs, okay, or it lost the programming. Uh, this is not going to be something a do-it-yourself can do, mm -hmm. okay? You're going to need a scan tool that's, uh, that most general repair shops will have, and they can pre-program the module and reprogram your key fobs. They will need both of them at the same time. Anytime both key fobs don't work, it's not going to be the batteries and the key fobs, yeah. okay? Unless one is sat in the house for eight years and then the other one went dead that you're using. Well, they're both eight years mm -hmm. old, okay? But, I mean, if you replace the batteries and it doesn't, uh, it either lost its memory and it needs to be reprogrammed mm -hmm. or the module itself went bad, which would cost more. If it's just the reprogramming, you're probably looking around $100, okay? Maybe $125, something like that. A good shop can do it, okay? Or do the dealer. The dealer on, on these you don't have to go to a dealer. Independence can do it, okay? Uh, we're capable, but that falls into general repair, so mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. Please don't yeah. call us. We're not into that, yeah. okay? We do it on the transmission, but <laughs> right. because we have to program transmissions, we uh -huh. do have that capability, yeah. and so that's what I'm saying. Good independent shops uh, with the latest technology definitely can do it, or mm -hmm. obviously the dealer can do it. Yep, okay. have to take it in. All right, yep. our final question is from Joe. Joe asks, in my 2005 Chevy Silverado, the vents on the passenger side blow hot, even when the AC is on. Vents are fine on the driver's side. What could be causing that? 
Well, we like to that's, keep the wife kind of warm, weird. don't we? I mean, <laughs> you know, she's over huh? there. No, it's listen, okay. When I'm They're hot, I'm compl- cranky. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Maybe it's a dual climate, you know? All right. I mean, are are you an, saying it's the passenger's fault? <laughs> that's an interesting question, though. Well, what could be causing that? Uh, actually, what it is, it, underneath the dash, there's a, bl- there's a whole air conditioning, heating, uh, control, uh, vent work, and everything. Uh-huh. Uh, in the old days, it was controlled by vacuum. Mm-hmm. The newer ones are controlled by electronics inside there, and there's blend doors in there that open up and close and redirect. You know that when you flat, turn it, right? yeah, it goes to defrost or it can yeah. go down to your feet or to the vents, okay? Well, one of the doors is stuck, mm-hmm. okay? Or one of the wires came off of it or a module has gone bad, one of the two. Again, probably not a do-it-yourself thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, check your fuses. If you want to poke your head underneath and see if you see any wire unplugged, yeah. maybe. I doubt it, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, probably it's got to go to the shop. His but, is a 2005. Uh, would his be vacuum operated? Or you more? know, I would think that one still could be vacuum, okay, on a 2005, yeah. okay, and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it is a possibility, okay, and you might start it here, change the different levers and see, does the passenger side blow cold or hot, you know, or is it only the driver's side? If it does on defrost or down to the feet, then it is definitely only one of the blend doors. Mm-hmm. Once in a blue moon, Depending if it's the far outside one, there is sometimes a hose. Maybe the hose fell off, but I'm mm-hmm. assuming it's blowing warm air, so then the hose is mm-hmm. connected. Yeah. It's the blend door then, yeah. most okay. likely. Okay. Well, some good information Again, today. Again, probably going to be a shop deal. I don't think a do-it-yourselfer can really do you this You know what one. I love okay. about this visit today, Peter, is you've been able to give us really specific information because the viewer questions were sure, really specific. Exactly. So, yeah. Year, think, make, model, and when I get yeah. a good description, it does help drastically. Yeah. So, you if, know, you, so if you've always thought you've seen Peter on the show and you've always uh, maybe you've won like, well, I might send a question in someday. Just keep that in mind. The more specific you are, the better the answer he can provide. Uh, five area locations for certified transmission. You can make appointments if you're having an issue online at omaha.certifiedtransmission.com. And that's a great point. That's why you want to provide the year because the year mm-hmm. can tell you as, as things change. Definitely. Mm-hmm. It, the want to wish changes. everyone a happy and safe fourth. Thank you guys Peter. too. You too. All right. All right. And again, great. don't come on Monday. Okay, you're I'll, off. I'll change my alarm clock. <laughs> you're off. Thank you. Wait, I mean, you could come if you want. Hang out with us. <laughs> Your question could be featured.